What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Interpreting the Stars, where today I'm joined by the one, the only, the Jedi Master of Film Reviews himself. It's Anthony A. Perez, who has agreed to join me to discuss Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny, a film that I've been dying to revisit for quite some time now. So let's get cracking. Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny was directed by Liam Lynch, and it ultimately acts as a fictionalized and humorous retelling of the actual band Tenacious D, made up of Jack Black and Kyle Gass. And in this specific movie, in an effort to become the greatest rock band of all time, they take it upon themselves to head out on an all-out adventure to find the famed Pick of Destiny, a guitar pick that all rock legends at one point in their life have used that have helped transform them into rock stardom. First and foremost, I wanna give a huge shout out and thanks to Anthony for joining me for my review today. We'll be hearing what he has to say about this film in just a hot second. First, let me give off some of my initial thoughts on this film. I last saw Tenacious D in The Pick of Destiny in 2008, 15 years ago. During that time in my life, I was still pretty innocent. And so the extreme vulgarity of this movie kind of put me off at that point, even though I did still kind of enjoy the film overall. Now when I'm 35, I can definitely appreciate the movie as a whole a lot better than I could back then, and without feeling awkward while watching it, by the way, in a household that, at the time, was extremely religious. It's amazing how much more I enjoyed this movie after that weight of awkwardness was lifted from me. Anthony, he's gonna mention this in his portion of the review here in a second, how much he grew up loving rock and roll and Jack Black and Tenacious D in general. And while no, I didn't know that, I could have probably guessed it. I've always been a fan of Jack Black as well. And uh, this really is in a pretty substantial way, Jack Black in his purest form. If you're a fan of his, I would be shocked to hear if you've never saw this movie or even wanted to. Because at that point, I would say that you're not as big of a fan of his as you say you are. In terms of genre, this movie is a mixture of slapstick comedy and musical, but even so, it's kind of its own thing too. I've seen plenty of slapstick comedies in my life, but for some reason, Tenacious D just kind of sticks out as something different. Nothing can compare. If I had to specifically pick out a movie that is the most similar to Tenacious D, I might say, Harold and Kumar? But that is a very, very broad comparison because of the slapstick humor element, the adventure angle, and the various jokes on weed. But seriously, the personalities brought forth from JB and Kyle Gass is truly the part of the film that stands out the most to me. In preparation for my rewatch of the film, by the way, I actually listened to the Audible book that they narrated about their actual history. That was called uh, Road to Redunction, if you're interested in checking that out. It was pretty cool. It was filled with them literally singing a lot of their own songs for the reader. Some I feel like they even wrote specifically for the audiobook as well. And uh, the story, I got a kick out of that as well, since it was very, very similar to the fictionalized version seen in this movie. And that offered a lot of insight. But before I head on to maybe some of my negatives, let's hear a word from Anthony to see what he had to say about Tenacious D in The Pick of Destiny. Take it away, man. What's going on, Dave and all his viewers? Thank you so much, my friend, for having me on for another video. And in today's video, you asked me to join you for Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny. This is a movie that, funny enough, you didn't know this, but I love Tenacious D. And I actually hadn't seen this movie since it originally came out, but I've been listening to the band for nearly 20 years. I listened to so many of their songs on constant repeat. Uh, and just overall, I'm a huge fan of both Jack Black, Kyle Gass, and their legacy with this band, Dave Grohl drumming with them, which Dave Grohl appears in this movie as Satan as well, as well as in their 2002 music video for Tribute. And yeah, when you invited me on, I don't think you knew any of that, but I'm a huge fan of rock and roll and metal and not only the modern day stuff. And while I've talked about that on my channel on countless occasions, one of the things I've always loved is 
classic rock, classic metal, and I've always really, really aligned myself with Jack Black and his love of that era of rock and roll and heavy metal, which is why I've always loved his projects like Tenacious D or even something like School of Rock that really honors that era of rock and roll and heavy metal. So I was more than happy to go ahead and check this movie out for the first time in many, many years. And so going back and revisiting it, I'm happy to say I still had a lot of fun just seeing Jack Black and Kyle Gass do their thing. Again, I'm a huge fan of them. I keep up with their music videos. I keep up with their behind the scenes stuff that they put out over the years. And they're definitely a group that I am 110% invested in. And then when it comes to Jack Black in and of himself, I'm just a huge fan of him as an actor and as a comedic presence in so many movies and even movies that are not comedic in and of themselves. And so going back and rewatching this film, this film is directed by Liam Lynch, which I'm sure you've already talked about at this point. And yeah, you know, I, I've always enjoyed them coming together because they've done a lot of music videos with Liam Lynch, uh, as well as Tribute, which I mentioned earlier. So yeah, I think that kind of made sense to get somebody who's done so much with Tenacious D to direct this film. Now, in some ways, I do think that's the detriment to the film as a film, but you can definitely feel the energy of their collaborative experiences in the past and in the future in this one movie. Going back to rewatching this movie, though, I had a good time. I, I will say, revisiting it, it's not as good as maybe I remembered it. It was definitely something I had fonder memories of than I can say I feel now after having seen it again. But I wasn't bored revisiting it. I found it to be a good, entertaining time for the most part. I enjoyed seeing these characters once again because, of course, this is a very ridiculous, fictionalized telling of the coming together of Tenacious D, of course. And I love the way that Jack Black and Kyle Gass play it in this movie. And overall, this is just a a dumb fun movie to watch. I don't think this is a movie that really stands the test of time in a lot of ways. I think there's definitely a lot about it that dates it to the early 2000s. There's definitely a lot about this movie that definitely is specific to its time. There was humor at that time, a specific editing style, a cadence to the comedy that is very specific to this era of the 2000s. But overall, going back and revisiting it, I definitely had a lot of moments where I was just laughing at how silly and ridiculous the movie is. But more than anything, I really enjoyed the musical element of this film, as I feel like that's where this film really shines. And I feel like the performers and the actors, and you know, most notably people like Kyle Gass, who's not really an actor, he's acted in things like this and has and other Tenacious D projects and other little things that he's popped up in, but he's not really like a full-fledged actor, whereas I would say Jack Black is. Some of the other actors that appear here or people that just appear for short periods of time aren't necessarily phenomenal actors, but a film like this allows them to just kind of be silly and goofy. And while it sometimes detracts from the overall film, I think for the most part, it works within the silly nature of this movie. While some of the humor doesn't work, I definitely laughed plenty of times at just how ridiculous this movie is and how ridiculous some of the dialogue is. And going back to the musical element, I think that that's where I found myself the most connected while watching this movie. There are so many moments throughout the movie where the musical part of this movie is where I found myself the most invested, laughing the most at some of the just ridiculous lyrics that they have for some of these musical segments. And more than anything, I think what I really enjoyed going back and revisiting this film is not only does it have that honor and that legacy kind of feel for rock and roll and definitely trying to, you know, just honor the, the, what's come before for what they're doing here. But beyond that, this film also is layered and just completely jam-packed with a bunch of cameos from names who were pretty big at the time, as well as some actors who have become substantially bigger since this movie came out. And it's kind of crazy to see them so young in small, small roles, like completely tiny roles for just a moment. And then you have people that are rock and heavy metal icons like Ronnie James Dio, of course, having done stuff with people like Black Sabbath. And of course, you know, later on doing his own thing with the band Dio, which was great to see. And overall, going back and revisiting this movie, it was a good, fun, silly time. I don't know this is a movie I'm dying to revisit again. I don't necessarily think it's hysterical. I don't think it's the greatest thing Tenacious D has ever done. But I honestly, re-watching the film, had a good time with it. It's not something, again, I'm clamoring to throw back on again. And I think all of you guys should go rush and see but I had fun with it. And I think that it's really gonna depend on your taste when it comes to whether or not you're gonna like this movie. This is a movie that is incredibly self-aware. This is a movie that's referential of rock and roll and heavy metal. This is a movie that is completely stupid and going for a slapsticky approach to most things with a lot of vulgar language and in a lot of ways can be viewed as an immature kind of comedy movie for a lot of people. And if that's something that's right up your alley, if you're just looking for good, dumb fun, then I think you can have a lot of fun with this movie. However, if you don't like Jack Black's over-the-top antics, you don't like a lot of yelling and screaming and a lot of ridiculousness, or you're not really into big, over-the-top, self-aware slapstick comedies, then I don't think this movie is going to work for you. So this isn't the kind of movie where I could say, yeah, I had a good time.
time going back and revisiting it, and I think all of you guys will love it. I think this is definitely something that's going to definitely depend on the individual who's watching the movie. But going back and revisiting it myself, I had a good time. I thought the film is still well made for the most part, but again, it is something that's very much dated to its time. It's very specific to its era, and in a lot of ways, I think that holds it back from being a timeless classic, and at times can often make you cringe, or there was a lot of jokes throughout the film that often fell flat for me. So while I did enjoy myself, there are elements about this film that are not great. There are definitely elements about this film that are not fantastic, and I think that because because it was in the hands of a director who's mainly done a lot of music video related stuff instead of a director who's mainly known for narrative film, at times this film can feel a little bit aimless and a little bit all over the place or maybe not all that impactful. But going back and revisiting it, I still had a good time. It was great to see Jack Black and Kyle Gass in these roles. Once again, I say roles kind of loosely, of course, because they're playing very ridiculous versions of themselves but overall i had a good time watching the movie again thank you so much to dave for inviting me on for this video and i'll go ahead and pass the floor back to the man of the hour big thanks to anthony for joining me to talk about this film make sure that you guys head over to his channel which i've left a link to in my description box down below show him some love you know tell him who sent you but yeah man it was really cool hearing your thoughts about this film and i i think for the most part our thoughts are mostly lined up because at the end of the day it really is just a dumb fun ride you know, nothing particularly amazing that deserves a ton of awards, though I do like the musical transitions, the songs themselves, obviously, and uh, the personalities of our leads, but you're not wrong. At times, it does sometimes feel as if the story kind of goes all over the place, and that's partially because the story revolving around the pick of destiny itself was not introduced until 35 to 40 minutes in. So it wasn't something that they were after from beginning to end. And because of that, there was like one obstacle in their way to get to the pick. That's it. So the narrative is a bit weak and underdeveloped, but it was still a lot of fun regardless. So Anthony, I think between the two of us, I did like it slightly more on rewatch, but not by much. My final score for this film was... A B minus letter grade, final overall score of 74%, 74 out of 100 possible stars. I think that it was decently made overall, and definitely more of a must see if you're a die hard fan of Jack Black than anything else. But if you aren't, this isn't going to do a lot for you, I don't think, especially if you don't like the style of music that Tenacious D is known for. So take all of that into consideration before you check out the movie. But guys, let me know your thoughts on Tenacious D and the Pick of Destiny in the comment section down below if you've seen it. As for YouTube, you guys know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe button, and bell to be notified when I come out with my next review. And until then, peace out.